Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. Today we're going to be discussing a concept in the cryptocurrency world known as proof of work. This is just going to be a brief non-technical overview of the concept, but if you're curious about how proof of work is applied in depth, there will be a follow-up video and there's an article available on the website. Before we discuss how proof of work works, we need to talk about a computer science concept known as a hash function. Hash functions are functions written in computer code that have two unique properties to them. The first is that they're one way. You can't reverse a hash function. So if you give it some input and you get the output known as the hash, you can't feed the hash back into that function or any other kind of algorithm to find out what the original input was. It's completely non-reversible. There's also a unique output for every input to a hash function. So if you give the function the word hello with an uppercase h, the output or the hash will be very different than the word hello with a lowercase h. Some uh, hash functions like the one used in Bitcoin have very, very radically different outputs even if one bit of data changes in the input. So when we're talking about proof of work, Nodes or computers uh, across the Bitcoin network or in some other applications are required to solve a cryptographic puzzle. This puzzle requires guessing to solve. There's no equation, there's no other way to find the answer to this problem other than by guessing some inputs to a hash function. Now the cool thing is, is because of these properties of hash functions, the answer is very easy to verify once it's found by some computer, say, on the Bitcoin network. So, this is a really interesting concept as applied to cryptocurrencies. What proof of work is used for is to secure blockchains that are used by currencies such as Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. With all of these nodes across the world trying to guess and find the answers to this difficult problem, it's very difficult and uneconomical for like, one or two malicious parties to try and fake a transaction on the blockchain because they would have to pull together more computing power than the rest of the entire Bitcoin network across the world. Kind of more interestingly, I think, the original application of proof of work was actually an anti-spam. Uh, Dr. Adam Back wrote a piece of software called HashCash, and he's a big player in the Bitcoin space now, so you may have heard of him. Uh, this HashCash required users of uh, technologies like an internet forum, message board, uh, email, to do a small proof of work problem before they could send out a message or create a post. This proof of work problem would only take maybe half a second or one second to solve, uh, and so it was unnoticed by everyday users. However, think about a spammer that's trying to send out 100,000 or a million messages to this message board. Well, all of a sudden, it becomes very uneconomical for them to do all of the proof of work that they would need to do to post those junk messages. And so Hashcash created an interesting anti-spam mechanism uh, by making it just impossible or, or you know, just a giant pain for some malicious party to try and send out a bunch of spam to people. Now, obviously, its most wide use is in cryptocurrencies. And so uh, it's kind of interesting to see how this evolved from something that was used in anti-spam on one computer to an entire network across the entire world trying to solve these problems in order to secure something without the need for a third party. So this has been a brief overview of proof of work and how it applies to things like cryptocurrencies and anti-spam. And I hope you'll check out the follow-up technical video on how this works in depth. I really hope you found this interesting and informative, and thank you very much for watching.